Your Excellencies, as President Ramingusau suggested, all of you children of the ocean, I think of all of you as sea creatures, <laughs> because in fact, all of us who live on this blue planet are as dependent on the ocean as any whale or fish or coral reef. We're all sea creatures in a way. I am deeply honored to be in the presence of all of you and especially my fellow honorees this evening and those who have been so, so uh, nominated over, over the last 10 years. Huh. This moment, I'm, among other things, acutely conscious that I stand between you and dessert. <laughs> so I'll try to make this as short as possible while at the same time taking advantage of this special moment to recognize that the ocean needs a voice. We have invested so much in understanding the land and the creatures who live there, invested in the technologies that take us into the skies above. And it's baffling to me that here we are at the edge of the 21st century, knowing as much as we do about who we are something about where we came from and where we might be going, but we've neglected the ocean. We've seen the benefits of what we've done in investing in the skies above. We have technologies that give us remarkable insights into things that our predecessors could not imagine being able to walk on the moon to send our probes beyond our own solar system into the universe beyond. We now know what we could not imagine even when I was a child in the middle of the 20th century. We can look at the stars and they're beautiful, amazing. We can know them in ways that no other creature on Earth can know what's up there in the skies above. I, I'm sure that dolphins wonder about what stars are. They may have made the connection between the sun and the stars and know that our sun is a star, but only humans have been able to figure out using the technologies, using the capacity to, to gather information and pass it on, pass it on, pass it on from one generation to the next, to be able to finally now see what Galileo could not understand, or at least his fellow citizens could not see, that no other creatures on earth, as smart as elephants are, they cannot know what 10-year-old children of today can know because we're armed with knowledge that has been the distillation of all preceding human history that we can dive back into the history of the Earth, know how old the Earth is. Even in the middle of the 20th century, the estimates of how old the Earth actually is were very different from the current estimates of how long we think this planet has been around, and also how long we have been around newcomers on a system that for the most part, through most of the history of the Earth, would be an unfriendly place for the likes of us. Not as unfriendly as Mars or Jupiter or even our own moon, but still inhospitable. What makes this Earth just right for us? It starts with water. No water, no life. No blue, no green. That's a fact. Now we know. No ocean. No life, that's where 97% of Earth's water is. So here we are, edging into the 21st century, as humans calculate time. What of the future? Here we are, as the guardians of all that will follow. Truly, 
the next 10 years will shape the next 10,000 years because we are now at a point where humans, one species, has succeeded in this amazing gift of knowing that we can see what others on Earth, not only other animals, <laughs> no other form of life, but no other humans who preceded us could know what we know now. And what are we waiting for? This is the moment as never before that we can see that we are changing the nature of nature. We are. Look at the atmosphere. We've just edged past 400 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere, making this planet more like our red sister planet, Mars, where there's a lot of CO2, where we're getting there <laughs> through our own efforts. We're Mars forming the blue planet, while some dream of terraforming Mars. So here, with a moment to just share with you a vision. You know, I look at this room, I think it's like a big submarine. I, it is, it's like blue and windows. I mean, if we could just transport ourselves, all of us right now, into the ocean to see the ocean from the inside out, not just the surface, not just look at the map of the seafloor, but look at the living ocean to understand that's where most of life on Earth is. The greatest diversity of life, the major divisions of animals, plants, microbes, they're all there. They keep us alive. Now we have to return the favor. I, I looked at a little video recently that Conservation International put together with Harrison Ford speaking as the voice of the ocean. He said, I am the ocean. <laughs> you need me, but I don't need you. Huh. The fact is, now we are at a point in time when the ocean does need us. We need to wake up and understand what the ocean delivers. Most of the oxygen in the atmosphere, a great sink for carbon dioxide, shapes climate and weather, maintains the planet that works in our favor. Here we are talking about climate change, and it was baffling to be at that great conference in New York. And where was the ocean, the great blue elephant in the room, missing from the discussions? How can that be at this point in history? Now, now we know. That's cause for hope. I've just come from Sydney, Australia, where the World Parks Congress was taking place, and some of you made that great leap from that other hemisphere to this one just to be here tonight to celebrate what the United Nations Environment Program has done over the years. Guardians of the future. We have an opportunity as never before armed with knowledge that our highest priority, as President Obama said, must be to keep the world safe for our children. Well, he was thinking guns and things. <laughs> and that's important. It really is. The conflict that we weigh upon one another. We must keep the world safe for our children. But really, how do we do that? First, we have to be able to breathe. We have to have water that magically falls out of the sky. We have to have a temperature regime that is just right for the likes of us. We have to have something like a predictable, stable world as a, as a basis for everything else that we care about. And that's what the United Nations Environment Program has, has really been focused on and why I am so honored to be here to speak for the ocean, to speak for nature, to speak for those who are typically not re represented at great discussions about the future of the planet, those who are not typically at the table, the wild creatures who don't vote but who keep us alive, and for those in the future 
whose future, in turn, will depend on what we do now, as never before, and maybe as never again. Thank you.